Hello, everyone. Happy American Thanksgiving Eve. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Today, we've got three great decks for you. We've got a jam packed episode. Let's get going. But before we do, as always, we'd like to urge you to hit that sub button, like, comment, ring that bell. A, it really helps us grow, it helps us expand our reach. We bring you multiple decks every single weekday and Sunday, proven decks that reach high infinite that can help you reach your goals and snap. We do giveaways. We do bundle guides. We cover everything you need. Supporting us is totally free. All you have to do is hit sub. And if you're willing to like comment, notification bell really helps us out. Thanks so much. and Let's keep going. We have a new feature right after this. We're going to do questions of the day. We're going to look at some listener questions from um, the comments in yesterday's video. We also, our first deck is from Streamer Johnson. Streamer Johnson is also known as Twitch Irem. He is a Korean streamer who is an absolutely phenomenal player. He builds some of the meta's best and most interesting decks. He's got a deck I think is the perfect counter to Annihilus. I don't want to give you an Annihilus deck today, so we're not going to do that. I want to make sure that um the deck I give you for Annihilus actually works, right? If you need a day one Annihilus deck, check yesterday's video. I have a whole bunch of day one decks. Um, The Galactus is working really, really well, and the Darkhawk is working really, really well so far at the very least. So if you want to start there, please feel free from yesterday's video. Um, We're going to instead look at things we know work. So we've got Streamer Johnson's deck, thanks to Odie, Love Ocean, who um posted his stats with this deck, which is what put it on my radar. We're going to talk about that deck. We're going to look at the cards in it. Uh, that deck should hard counter Annihilus. So if you are struggling with Annihilus, this is where to look. We are also doing a quick deck review for W's Guardians deck. Um, I talked about it in Monday's video, and everyone went crazy asking me questions about it. So we're just going to review the deck. It's one of the first decks we covered this season, but it's still really good. So let's talk about it. Um, next up. We are going to look at the deck with the best stats in the most games. This deck has almost 2,000 games with a crazy win rate in that number of games and the highest cube rate I could find for anything with over 1,000 games. That means it's really freaking good, right? Um, it relates to the W deck too, which is pretty cool. Then we'll do a bundle review for the Pro Bundle Mark II and Thanksgiving Dinner Bundles. Then we've got a deck from Buddy. Buddy is a Japanese player on Twitter at BuddyLean who tries to connect the. Um, Western, I guess, North American meta with that of um, the Japanese meta sharing decks from both. Buddy got a bunch of gold and an infinite tickets with infinite ticket with the deck. That's different from anything we usually see. And then we're going to look at my shop from Tuesday and sorry, Monday and Tuesday. Let's go. First, Greg Lufkin asks if he should run a lower tier deck with all the cards or a higher tier deck with replacements. Um, I think that that is a ridiculously complex question. It depends how many replacements, how good the replacements are, right? Like, if you're trying to run a destroy deck without Venom, then you need to run a lower tier. Um, but if you're trying to run a lower tier deck and you're missing X-23, I think you could make that work. It depends exactly how important those cards are. I am, again, going to offer, if you are a Series 3 player and trying to figure out what the best things you can play are, Hop on the Discord, send me, it's not going to be in like five minutes, it takes me time, I have a full-time job, I'm a union person, I'm married, I have a kid, it's Thanksgiving, I have grading to do, so on. Life, right? But, within a few days, I will get back to you with basically every deck, a document that has every deck you can make, and what cards to target in order to make other meta decks. Cool? That is my promise to any viewer of this video. I think that's more useful than just saying, oh, well, you should definitely run the lower tier deck with all the cards. Because, like, I don't know. It depends what it is. It depends exactly what cards you have and what cards you're missing. The reason I don't do specific Series 3 content is because everyone has their own Series 3 journey, at least as of right now. I'm hoping that changes. Banshee suggests we get a variant of the base card to so uh, solve Series 3 below. And what I mean, what he means is, or how he phrases it is, if you buy or open a variant for say uh what's a nice series three card oh venom then you should automatically get the base card it's a good way to incentivize spending um because at that point you get the variant you then get the base card right like so like you're more likely to spend to get that uh variant it'll speed up your journey and it's like a nice way to help everything out i don't really like that i'm going to be completely honest um i don't want 
getting through Series 3 faster to be a pay-to-win thing necessarily. I think that Series 3 just needs to be shorter. I think waiting six or more months to be able to compete in the metagame is crazy. And some people are like, hey, it took me eight months. Hey, it's taken me almost a year to finish Series 3. Um, at that point, no offense, I'm not trying to be rude. You're not spending um, resources in-game that are given to you, and especially if you're buying the Season Pass, you're not spending those resources optimally, and that's why it's taking you so long to get through. We've done the math on this. We've checked. It should be about six months if you do everything perfectly. That's still too long. Ping Chikata wonders, do I have any homebrews or I just run decks from established creators? So um, I occasionally post homebrews as like full deck guides when they're really important. Um, when I think the deck is really, really great. I did that with my uh, Kitchen Sink Phoenix deck. I've done it here and there. It comes up. I had a... um. Ravona Darkhawk thing I really like that also ran Loki that people tested and had a lot of success with. Most of my homebrews, though, happen um, in the OTA and new card videos. When an OTA or new card video comes out, that's the point where I release a um, where I release like a bunch of my ideas on decks. Those decks very often, if you go back and check those videos, end up meta decks or really close to meta decks. But I don't have time to play the like crazy amount of games that are really required to like make sure that my decks are meeting the um, quality of the channel regularly. So I like to give my ideas and then I find decks. Also, it's really cool to cr uh, credit other creators. Uh, also, big props to Cam Best in the latest episode of The Snapshot. He um, basically shouted me out for someone who always tries to give deck credit. And that's true. I am someone who always tries to give deck credit. But more than that, I think a great way to find creators, to learn who to follow, to learn what you're looking for, is to look to some of the best creators who create decks that are consistent across the meta. And I want to highlight them where humanly possible. Cool. If you have any follow-ups, if you have any other questions, let me know down below, and we'll just add questions of the day. Let's do deck one. This is Johnson Destroy from Odie. Um, this should absolutely kick the butt of any um should absolutely kick the butt of any whatchamacallit, Annihilus deck. So specifically, if you can lock down that right lane, Professor X is going to completely destroy um lockdown. You get the benefit of doing that early through X23. In addition, though, you also have um Carnage, Killmonger, Venom, and Deathlock, and then if they do bother to send you junk, all they've done is make your death cheaper. Um, if you think they're trying to Nihilus and you can get a turn five Alioth, Lyoth, Alioth, Lyoth, then you're totally set, right? Like all of these things should completely smoke the face off your opponent. And then you have Legion because Legion is your high roll cube. Cool. This is the deck that is from the thumbnail. This deck is completely sick. I've been playing it. I love it. I think this is great. It's, um, so I'm a little bit off destroy just because I think it's a little linear and I'm not enjoying it. This deck is really fun. I've enjoyed it a lot and I think it's crazy. It's like a perfect meta answer for where we are. Um, I think Legion is the sauce, but I'm curious about Psylocke. Vision was in the original, like the original Johnson version had Vision in that spot. Um, I'm very, very curious about how Psylocke would work here as an extra way to get a card out and something you can just eat when you want to. Eliath for leader, like always. I think that is a major loss here. Um, although if you're losing priority in the Annihilus uh, and you copy it, that's pretty great. Um, don't play this without X-23. Like, by the way, X-23 is in spotlights right now. Just now, if you want Annihilus, like, X-23 is in spotlights. It seems like it's probably worth getting at this moment, given that, like, the answer to Annihilus and Annihilus are both in the same spotlight cache. Turn by turn. Uh, this was 13 and 3 on ladder and climbed over 200 ranks in like no time, which means really high cube rate. I think it was 250 ranks. Um, basically, good luck playing around both Legion and Professor X. And if you're going to take this into conquest, think about how annoying that is. If you know your opponent has a Legion and Professor X, trying to figure out which they're going to do is a nightmare. Um, turn 1, X23 over Hood. Turn 2, X23 over Wolverine. And Wolverine's basically equal to Bucky. Um, turn Three, first destroy. Turn four, Professor X or Legion if you can, or you play your next destroy. Turn five, Professor X or Legion if you can, or destroy number three and death. And turn six is Eliath. That's the order. All good? You're snapping whenever you can get a Professor. 
off or whenever you have a really good lesion target, basically. Oh, also, awesomely. Um, people are playing for null when they see you're playing this deck. Like, they're assuming that your top end is null and that your top end is uh, Eliath is so many cubes. Okay. Quick variant talk. I only have one hip in this deck. Actually, uh, two hips. Killmonger. Awesome. Eliath and Killmonger my hips. We want four. It's fine. I have a Legion hip. You'll see it in a minute in the next deck or the deck after whatever. And but I wanted Rockstar Legion because he's a rock star in this deck. We've got Noir Hood. We've got this really cool X23. Uh, I also, in the time since I made this logo, opened the Ryan Gonzalez X23. It took me four freaking spotlights to get uh to get a Nihilus. So I have another X23. Do I would, do I like the Ram one better or do I like this one better? It's gonna be really close. They're, I'm gonna flip between the two. I've got this really cool Bucky. I've got another really good Bucky, but I like this one a lot, so it's here. I've got the Jacinto Carnage and Venom. I've got a uh, the Deathlock with all the wires coming out of it. Wolfie in the rain. Uh, always baby Professor X. A, it's only Professor X I have, but B, I adore it. And then I've got this amazing death from the Midnight Suns, and I have that one with a gold background. It's a beautiful. And next up, we have, since a bunch of you asked, this is the W Guardians deck, the one that is... um like the most consistent deck pre and post infinite. Um, I'm aware that you can't tell what card they're playing with Daredevil, but it doesn't matter for this deck. What you're trying to do with your Daredevil is learn where to Professor X or Gamora. And knowing where to Professor X or Gamora is backbreaking. Uh, Nebula is great right now. Uh, like just in the meta overall, Nebula is finally like top notch because Kitty is not really in the meta. Um, Nightcrawler gives you some movement. You can block a lane to block their junk and then move it out of the way. Same thing for Jeff. Medusa is just nice and big. Storm says no, thank you. While Ms. Marvel pumps power, if they're trying to stop Ms. Marvel, they they're probably playing around Storm and Professor X, and that's free wins. Eliath is Eliath, and Doom is Doom. That is this deck. Please try it out. Oh, there are a couple replacements. If you don't have Nebula, you're probably running something like Iceman. Um. If you don't have Jeff, you kind of have a problem. You can try Lizard. Jeff is wildly important between Professor X, um, Ms. Marvel, and Storm here. But hey, fine. Um, Iron Lad can easily be something like either Jubilee or Shang-Chi. I would not play this without Ms. Marvel, and I think you need a life. Oh, this is the W Guardians deck. I'm aware that there's two whole Guardians in the deck. I didn't name it. W did. But this is, for my money, the best deck or like I don't know. I guess Loki is still the best deck. It's the best non-Loki deck in the game, the most consistent on Loki deck in the game. But it's not the one with the best stats. That's this deck. This deck has a 62.5% win rate, 0.74 cube rate in 1900 games. That's completely huge and absurd. It's fairly similar to the deck. It has a few extra ways to steal cubes, which is basically the difference between this and the previous deck. Is this deck as good as the previous into Eliath? Without Professor X, I'm not 100% sure. It's early. It's hard to tell. Cool. However, 0.74 cube rate in 1900 games is freaking unheard of. This does a lot of the same things as the last deck, except it has a little Zabu package, right? Zabu says Jessica Jones is a 9, and now I have a 4-9 and a 4-15, and Captain Marvel can go wherever needed to win, and Iron Lad can copy them. And I have my Storm wins, but I also have my Storm on 4 into Legion wins. Um, which is just like I can drop Nebula, um, Nightcrawler, Jeff, right? And then if I'm uh, Storm Legioning, you've got all the options in the world to make sure you win that game. You've got Doom for the extra power. This doesn't even bother with Alive. It's sick. You love to see it. Okay, this deck needs Zebu. Otherwise, you can't run all those fours without like choking on all the fours. Nebula can easily be Iceman. Um, you lose the Captain Marvel play. Sorry, there's not really a choice. You can try Sunspot for that, but then, like, Sunspot's never really going to gain power unless you get that play, so it's up to you. Um, Jeff can be Medusa. Silk is the best change for Jeff, but that's another Series 5, so Jeff can be Medusa. Legion can be Vision or Professor X. Iron Lad can be Jubilee, Rescue, or Shang-Chi, depending on how you feel. And this is not a deck you can play without Miz. All good? So... Again, the stats on this are through the roof. Turn 1, Nebula over Nightcrawler. Turn 2, Zabu over Nebula over Jeff over Nightcrawler. Unless you think you're doing the Storm play, then Jeff bumps up and Nebula bumps up. Turn 3, Storm over Lad 
over Just Jones, over Captain Marvel, over Ms. Marvel. Turn four, you really, really want Ms. Marvel, unless you think you're going to spend your last turn doing the Zabu double three play. Totally fine. Um, generally speaking, I like to wait a little later to play Ms. Marvel if I can, because everyone's running rogue on Earth, but you can always just throw a second ongoing mid. Like if Zabu is mid and you've got Ms. Marvel and Zabu, I'd take that 50-50 just fine. Uh, turn five, seam is turn four, but Legion where appropriate. Basically, if the locations favor you, Legion. Finally, we have Doom or um, two fours or Legion. So Doom is great here. Or you can drop two fours, or you can do the last turn Legion thing to shock remove. There's too many options for your opponent to play around, just like there were with that first deck. These are not easy decks to pilot, but they are very, very powerful. Variant talk. We've got more hips. In fact, our first four cards are hips. We've got Nebula, Nightcrawler, Zebu, Jeff. We've also got the lovely Ms. Marple, Iron Lad, and Legion, a seven hip deck. You'll love to see it. I've got this amazing storm they gave us for free in gold. I've got this Captain Marvel that I really enjoy. Um, I just finally opened it in the season to pass track. Jamie McKelvey, America Chavez, Alex Ross, Dr. Doom, and sweetly, the Dwar Just Jones. This is one of the nicest looking decks I could have. I am a fan. Bundle guide. The Thanksgiving dinner bundle is terrible. Cool. 20 bucks for 300 collectors token the 1500 gold and two variants is not good. Especially because Gambit is a fine card, but not a good one. And Punisher is freaking unplayable. They, it's amazing they didn't buff him to me during Twitch drops. But that's where we are. Um, these cards are bad. The value is bad. It's just not giving you enough. It's giving you very little progress for your 20 bucks. I strongly urge you to not buy this um, unless you're like completely in love with the variants. If you think the variants will bring you some great joy, go for it. Uh, I'd also like to note for any viewers, New York slices are the only real good pizza in America or anywhere else for that matter. So sorry about your bad local pizza that you completely love from your childhood. Sub though, don't hate. Pro Bundle Mark Three. This is our new Pro Bundle. Um, it's basically the same as previously, except they threw in six thousand tokens for your hundred bucks. That's one to two cards. Hundred bucks, you get nine thousand credits. That's like a two spotlight caches ish, I believe, and uh, spotlight keys, whatever. And then one to two cards. I think this is worth it. I think this is a great value. I'm not telling you to spend 100 bucks on the game, but if you're going to spend 100 bucks on the game, this is a great way to do it. You also should note in the upper right corner where it says value, progress, cosmetics, and card diff, that is all from Marvel Snap Zone. Our friend Carolus does this for every single bundle there, so check those out. Also, our friend Savage Yeti over at Savage Yeti Gaming, just type that into the search bar, does a weekly full bundle guide that actually has mathematic breakdowns for every bundle coming out that week. So if you want like the full numbers for this, check those out. I'm merely telling you, I mean, like I watch everybody, right? So I'm telling you what the numbers have told me about what to buy. If you're spending a hundred bucks on the game, this is a great way. Although usually I'm going to be honest. The one thing I don't like about this is, um, I, when I'm spending money, I like to try and get some gold back in the process. This is not giving you any gold, but it is just straight up giving you cards. So if there's still series four and five cards you want, grab this, get the cards you want, and then you'll have a bunch of credits. You can upgrade it. You get a bunch of boosters for fun. And the cute, the freaking title is not terrible, I guess. That, that has no value for me. Next up, we have Buddy's No Hand. This got six gold tickets and one infinite ticket, which is great. Buddy says about a 75% win rate, but I don't actually have stats on that, so I'm just sort of reporting that offhand. This deck is awesome. Um, Helicarriers here is like sort of just extra hand protection. It's just extra cards. Basically, you're just sort of chucking stuff. You're trying to get rid of as much of their hand as possible. Your ideal um, stuff to do is you want Moon Knight or Werewolf, Silver Samurai, and Black Bolt, and you just chuck a bunch of their cards, and then you, um, Ella, right? Again, you're like, all right, cool, I got an Iron Man, a Black Hat, and a Swarm back, and you enjoy, right? Like, that plus the just general good tempo of the deck, and Werewolf, that gets huge. Werewolf's one of the best cards in the game. Wins games of Snap. Uh, Helicarrier is very fun to hit, by the way, just for the record. Those extra cards are often really good. I'm more and more becoming a Helicarrier fan, which I never thought I'd say. All right. 
Uh, you need Werewolf and Silver Samurai for this deck. It's like unplayable without it. It's worth noting that I told everyone to buy Werewolf. Uh, a lot of people were like, no, 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 he's going to get nerfed. No, 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 I don't believe you. He still might get he still might get nerfed, but anything can get nerfed. I think that's poor logic, right? You just never buy cards if you constantly live in fear of nerf. But the last day bef that a card is on sale, I give you my like, oh, now we have an actual educated opinion on this card. I told everyone to get Werewolf. Remember to check the day before. Um, the card rotates out. I'm going to give you a last ring that bell so you don't miss it. Uh, stature can actually go for something like Vision or Ghost Rider. It's obviously worse given what else you have going on with this deck, but stature can go for something like Vision, and I would actually change it for Ghost Rider if I was going to change it. So, Blade when the target is good, uh, but usually you pass on one. Basically, if Helicarrier is there, if Iron Man is there, whatever, you can toss a Blade out. If not, you don't. Colleen, if Swarm, again, if not, you usually don't. Um, turn three, Werewolf is always my priority. I would drop Moon Knight basically always otherwise, but Werewolf is always my priority. Werewolf is just strong. Werewolf is top five card in the game right now. Turn four is Silver Samurai, basically always again. Um, there are times when you know your opponent is playing certain decks where you can replace Silver Samurai with Moon Knight because you're trying to just disrupt what they're doing. For example, you know your opponent is playing Annihilus then I would move Moon Knight up the uh, priority queue on turn four, right? Because if you hit their Annihilus, they just have a bunch of crap on their board they can't do anything with. That seems good. Turn five, Black Bolter Stature and what you can from, or, or Stature and what you can from earlier. So if you drop Moon Knight on four, for example, uh, you can then spend turn five dropping Stature and Silver Samurai just fine. And turn six is supposed to be Hella. Um, I found that a reasonable amount of the time on turn six, though. I was playing either Black Bolt and Stature or just that Hella carrier. So don't be afraid to play that. Either. All right. Variant time. We are Blade hip. We are Iron Man hip. We are Hella carrier hip. I do not have Stature hip. I need it. I wish I bought it. I haven't seen it in months. Um, that Black Bolt hip comes out at the end of December. I will be buying it immediately. We have our Noir Colleen, friends with our Noir Black Cat. Hella is a gardener, which is lovely. Um, Swarm is a dinosaur made of bees, which is freaking amazing. Best werewolf by night. The only Silver Summer I actually have, but I think it's really cool. I love the red background, which is wild because it's not hard. I don't even want a gold. And Baby Moon Boon Knight is adorable, especially like the standing with his head in the moon background. I like really, really like the color here. So that's the variance for this one. We're finally on to shop stuff. All right, shop from two days ago. So I'm not spending gold on pixels. I just bought the um the white queen from the uh shop takeover, the Peach Moko shop takeover. Um I have a couple moon girls, I have the Twitch drop one, and I bought the Halloween one. I have Hip Destroyer. I bought this man thing. I decided none of the other man things are out, none of the man things have dates. And this man thing is the stuff of nightmares. It is so cool looking, and I'm about to play a lot of man thing with the Nihilus. So I decided I wanted the right man thing, so I went and got it. Um, I have Rainbow Loki and the Season Pass Loki. I'm not spending gold on pixels. And then I have Hulkbuster. I've had Blueprint Hulkbuster forever. I think it's reasonably cool. But I also have the bottom right one, the one where he's sort of like, I don't know, like rocketing at you. And I love it. I think it's great. Also, there is a hip you love to see it. There's a hip one coming sometime soon. So the second that Autobots looking Hulkbuster comes out, I'm grabbing. It actually looks more like GoBots for anyone who knows what that is. Anyone old like me, but whatever. I think it's great, and I want that hit bad. Um, finally, this Maximus showed up in my shop twice, and both times I was like, "That's the best Maximus," but I'm not spending gold on it. I have Kid Maximus, and whatever. Well. The collection track decided, no, you can have it. You like it so much, just enjoy. So I now have the Maximus I've always wanted. Sometimes Snap is kind. Ooh. Next up, today's shop. I'm not buying the Cerebro. It's nice and all, but I have two other Cerebros recently. I have um the Blueprint one and then the 3099 one. Uh, I'm not spending anything on Pixels. I have a hit for Abomination. We just talked about Hulkbuster yesterday. It's apparently wants me to buy a Hulkbuster. Um, I have hip Hellcow. I bought this Quicksilver because there are like two cards left in Snap that I don't have. Um, Sorry, there's nine cards that I don't have variants for, and there's two more cards that I only have pixels for. Quicksilver was one. 
So I was like, you know what? 700 gold sports variant. Let's do that. Let's knock out one of the hips. So I now have a Quicksilver. Cool. And then Shuri. This is one of my favorite Shuris. But um, if I had a Shuri, it would be my third favorite. I love baby Shuri forever. It was the only Shuri I ran. Then the Black Panther one came out. And I was super hyped. So I bought the Black Panther one. And then I have this third one that I don't like quite as much. But I think it's like reasonably cool. And I'm perfectly happy to have it, right? But the Black Panther one means I basically never need another Shuri. I passed on the hip for, for gosh sake. So that's that. All right. That was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to you for the evening. Morning for you guys, I guess. Thank you so much for watching. Ring that bell, like, sub, comment. We'll see you tomorrow with another snap take. I will have good Annihilus text for you tomorrow. Stay for them.